Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. All right. Welcome to the Soap Series. Uh, I am your host, Doug, with my co-host, partner in crime, Pam. How are you doing, Pam? I'm doing well, thanks. <laughs> You're, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, tonight we also have a special guest co-host, uh, Jay. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem, and Nora, we're going to kick things right off. Uh, we have the amazing, beautifully talented Catherine Kelly Lang with us tonight. Uh, welcome to the show, Catherine, or Kelly. Which Hi, you, prefer, which you, you are prefer? so sweet, and I just love that B&B intro. makes me feel good every time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer Kelly or Catherine or Catherine Kelly? I prefer Kelly. My friends and family call me Kelly, and sometimes still people at work call me Catherine, but I've grown up being called Kelly, so okay, go perfect. ahead and call okay. me Kelly. No problem. Well, welcome Thank to the you. show. We're very honored to have you uh, this evening. Uh, first and foremost, we have to congratulate you on 25 years. Uh, that's such an, a, a monumental moment for you guys. We were all the, the viewers and uh, have watched Monday's episode, and it was just really good to see you know the core core four we call uh, of you guys all on the air and. Uh, just congratulations on this such a great success. You know, yeah, success. I loved it. I loved seeing that too. And it was really, it was a simple show. You know, not much of a, a story going on that day. But we all would, all just got together and enjoyed each other's company. And then, of course, had all the flashbacks. And I mean, it was it was di- a different kind of show, and it was special. And and it's just strange seeing those flashbacks because it yeah. takes us way back to another time. Yeah. But we love really them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a lot of people commenting saying more flashbacks, more flashbacks. Yeah, uh, it brings we, back a lot of good memories. Uh, we, oh, we, yeah, and it's yeah. fun. I mean, it is with Core 4. It's just so much history there, and it's important to, you know, bring that back around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I read it recently, uh, an, interv- an old interview from Bold and Beautiful, about five years uh, from your first five years on, in which you expressed an intention not to stay too long and to move on. But, you know, you're with us 25 years later. When and why did that change? Wow. Where did you see that? <laughs> you just I, read that? I, just, I, I saw it in an interview. I've been, you know, doing all the different research and links and stuff, and it was a, just wow. it, it was. It was just a, a, a statement, and I wasn't sure, um, you know, if it was if you were only going to be on there for a short amount of time, or if it was always intended to be a, a long-term role. Well, my dream was to be a movie actress, and that's what I really wanted to do. But you know, um, the Bold and the Beautiful came along, and I turned soap operas down before, especially the ones in New York. I didn't want to go live there and uh, work out of New York, so I would. I turned a couple down, but when Bold and the Beautiful came around, I also did Young and the Restless when I was 18 for like five episodes in the summer, right, right, and that was really right. fun. And then um, when Bold and the Beautiful came around, I wanted to try for it because it was a brand new show and a brand new character that I would get to start and create, and it was a half-hour show, and it was in Los Angeles. So... I decided to go on the interview, and it went so well they called me back. And then you have to pretty much make the decision before you do your final test mm-hmm. because you have to sign the contract before you do your test on air. So I had to make the decision if I really wanted to do it, and I went for it. And then I tested, and I got it. I tested with John McCook, actually, and uh, I got the part. So it was really exciting to be able to create something new <clears throat> and be there mm-hmm. from day one. That was really fun for me. And I also used to watch Capital, which I think we took their place. And they were a yes. half-an-hour show. And I really liked it because it was half an hour. It was full of story and, and drama and um, not so much action, like gun shooting and all that, which some of the hour shows are. But it, it had a lot in the half an hour, and I really enjoyed it. So I was kind of excited that Bold and Beautiful would be similar. Oh. And, um, I mean, it's, it's different, but it's similar in the respect that it's a half an hour show and it's got it, the story has to move along. So it's been amazing. I mean, 25 years later and I'm still there. The thing is, the first 10 years to me went sort of slow Mm -hmm. and then the next 15 years went, well, I don't even know where they went. I mean, they just just flew by. I'm just kind of shocked, you know, sitting here thinking 25 years and that's half of my life and it just, it's, it's weird it's great, mm-hmm. and especially as an actress, it's great to have a job that you're, 
doing every single day that you enjoy doing and that you love, you know, to act is something that I always want to do. So mm-hmm. whether it be films or nighttime or soap opera, it doesn't matter. It's just, the point is I've had the chance to be able to do what I love doing every single day for mm-hmm. 25 years. I mean, yeah. not every single day, but <laughs> close enough. Oh, yeah, And exactly. um, that's, that's just a blessing. And Bruce has always been so front and center the entire yeah, so run of the really show. Yeah, it's been really exciting. I've, I've, um, I've never stopped working. You know, my character's been on every week. We recently, we, we recently watched some clips of the first Bold and Beautiful episode on YouTube, and it's amazing to see how the core story of Eric and Stephanie and Ridge, Brooke, and Caroline was set out so clearly on that first day mm-hmm. and still drives the show directly and in the generation that followed. So how did, that sh- how did Bold and Beautiful manage this without becoming stale with, that story, with those, those characters? Well, that just shows you how brilliant Bill Bell Sr. was. I mean, he was a master at what he did and how he created shows you know, and look at Y&R. But he was very good at creating the characters and making the foundation for a fabulous show. And, mm-hmm. you know, since Brad has taken over, Brad Bell, his son, and mm-hmm. he's made it into a little bit different of a show. He's turned it into his own, basically, which is mm-hmm. really good. And he added uh, different elements and um, just worked upon what his father had created in the beginning. And it's the show that it is today, Mm -hmm. you know, and he's recently brought in the younger cast and now developing the next generation, which is really important, and with Mm -hmm. those also core characters, so Mm -hmm. it's really exciting to watch and still very successful. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, And when I watched it today, um, I love the outdoor scenes. It it puts such a great spin on it. It, It's... um, Gosh, I can't even think who was standing outside. Uh, Rick was standing outside talking with Amber, and then all of a sudden Thomas and all them started coming, so Amber went to hide. And but they were standing outside in the car by a car parking lot or something, and it just it ma- makes it more realistic. And oh, I love was it, it still the anniversary party? Mm, no, no, they were. They, uh, Thomas said something to Rick about, "Oh, you're still using Amber to make your drawings," and okay. and he was denying I'll have to watch it. it. I, I tried yeah. to watch it today, but it wasn't at home. So, but, oh. um, do you watch it every yeah, day? Yeah, I'll have to watch it. I, somebody said something. I had a scene with Amber or something. I know, if, you know, because we we tape about a month and a half in advance, so I forget right. what we do. You know, from yesterday, I forget. But. Can you speak? Um, oh. So, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look. And speaking of outsides, you know, Bold and the Beautiful has always been notorious for all the remote settings. Uh, you know, news broke that you're going to Italy soon. So since you're such a super, superstar there, how do you take care of yourself with security and privacy? You know, the, the fan base there is a lot different than here. Um, so how, well, the show how, does a good job. Usually, you know, we go, when we go with the show, they're, we're all together and we all stay in the same place. And then when we're working, we have security and, you know, it's just... Um, it's well managed, but it's easy to walk down the street. I mean, some people, they'll notice, they'll come up, they say hi, they want a picture or an autograph or something, but usually it's, they're very nice about it. It's not like it, it was, I don't think, in the beginning. I think it was more, you know, because it's been playing over there now for a very long time. But in the beginning it was more of a... Uh, a little bit more fanatical, I think. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of craziness going on with the fans and stuff, but it's calmed down a bit. Oh, okay. I mean, Jake? I think if I put glasses and a hat on, that nobody would notice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Jay, do you want? You have a question you want to go ahead with? Well, I was wondering about the um, other countries that the show airs in. You know, they're back two, three, four, five years sometimes, and it must be nice mm-hmm. when you do visit the other countries for them to see that the same characters are on year after year, and that just has to be a, you know, a real nice thing for the fans to see that the actors, you know, love the show and want to stay with the show after, you know, so many years. So that's to be a, a real nice thing for the fans to see in other countries. Yeah, because, you know, they, they get to know them and they can relate to them, and they if they watch us year after year, that there's some kind of investment, you know? Right, exactly. Yes, yeah, it's important to have the new characters that are coming on and really building that and not going through a lot of different people and hiring and then letting them go. And You know, just because people can't really grab on to something. So 
I think in this next group of the young kids, I think uh, Brad's really found some some really good actors and really good responsible younger people, you know, that really care about what they're doing. And I think they're going to be sticking around for quite some time. And of course, hopefully. they're all good looking. <laughs> oh my God! Fit right yes. in with the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they it's, are. It is. We're lucky. Very... We got a, We've got a really good group of people. Yes, you do. Uh, it's very clear that Brooke is part of the four core, uh, the core four, as we talked about a minute ago. So many fan favorites over the years have not had that longevity. Why do you think, personally, and Brooke, a troubled, complex character, have, has had such staying power for the last 25 years? Um, I think because she was the girl from the other side of the track. Mm-hmm. You know, the show's based on the fashion industry in Los Angeles. So there's a lot of glitz, there's a lot of glamour, a lot of rich people. And Brooke was in the poor family. And then she fell in love with Ridge, who was in the rich family. And, you know, people like to see those kind of dynamics and right. see how it turns out. And they usually root for the underdog. And, of course, Brooke has gotten herself into a lot of trouble but I've managed to, I never want her to be the good or the bad person. I want her to be a real kind of person that has a good heart, but then also gets in trouble sometimes and not really meaning to be malicious or manipulative or, you know, anything like that. She just, she just would tend to get herself in trouble. Um, so I've, I've had to kind of try to walk that line, and I think people appreciate that, and they love to hate Brooke and that sort of thing. And you know, you do it well. You do show all Thank those you. elements. You do. Thank you. There's times that we feel so sorry for you, and other times we want to yell at you. What's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah, I understand. I do think after everything she's been through, though, she had to start growing up a little bit. She had to mm-hmm. learn from some of those mistakes and not keep doing the same things over and over again. Um, and I think she has. I think Yes, I think definitely. She some changes, yeah. Well, viewers were shocked to see uh, Jacob Young back uh, after he was uh, um, on All My Children. Um, how's it changed with him since his first round? Have you maintained contact while, with him while he was off the show and, and now that he's back on? Yeah, I love Jacob. He's he's just awesome, and um, I've seen him a, a little bit since he's been off the show. And my husband and, and Jacob are good friends, and my husband also manages him. But um, so we know Jacob really well, and he's married with a child, and we know his wife and his baby, and you know we've done some things together. And he's just he's just a doll, and he's an awesome actor. I'm so happy to have him back playing the character that he he was you know, starting in. But then, of course, you know, Kyle came in, and Kyle was wonderful, too, but then it's nice to also have Jacob back. Yeah. But uh, because once they aged that character, it was Jacob who actually was was the person that had they aged him to when he was 17. Mm-hmm. You know, right. Otherwise, he was just a little kid. So that's when the good story really started happening with Amber and losing the baby and all of that stuff. And um, it's just... And he's had he's had a lot of growth through the years as an actor and as a person. So it's nice to have him back and be able to have all that on our show with us. Yes, definitely. Jay, go ahead. Well, speaking of bringing characters back, um, I was very excited that they brought Caroline, or pardon me, um, Karen back, and Joanna Johnson. I know that the two of you were friends from way back in the day, and I just wondered what you thought of her coming back to the show for a brief period. I know. I just love Joanna. And we see each other once in a while as well. Um, she's super busy. She's got a lot of li- she's got little kitties running around the house. So she's really busy with her little kids, and she can't seem to get out as much anymore. But um, it's great to have her back. It hopefully helps spur off this new storyline that's happening. And I'd like to see her more. I mean, she, she only came back for, I'm, I'm not sure how many episodes, but... I think she's. I think we're going to see more of her as well. Oh, good. I don't know good, exactly great. what's happening there, but I'm sure because she's, you know, the aunt of Caroline, the younger Caroline now. So. Yeah, that was kind of interesting to see that. You know, Car- she named her daughter Caroline after her sister. So it's when now when we talk about Caroline on the show, we have to kind of talk about junior and senior. 
say because, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bold, and Be- Bold and Beautiful has made uh, real strides in diversity in the recent years. Um, now they're actual people of color integrated with Forrester and Lincoln. The one false note that's being mis- uh, not represented is the gay and lesbians. Uh, even though LA, you know, even though the LA fashion world would uh, seem to be the natural place for this, do you think that there's an area in Bold and Beautiful that could explore this someday, or do you think it's just a, it's not perfect for a certain show? Some daytime shows have covered the the, the topic. Uh, right now, we have a Days of Our Lives with the character coming out of the closet and and such. So, what is your what are your thoughts about that? Well, I actually think those storylines are really interesting. Whenever I see it on another show and I have the show on, whether it be in the house or in, in my dressing room, because I watch the feet in my dressing room, I watch, and I see those stories come on, I stop and watch, because it's something new, it's something interesting, it's, and it's usually done really well. So uh, it's funny, because whenever we're doing scenes and we're on the set and we... We always make jokes about, oh, a new storyline when, and, you know, we're hugging each other. A girl hugs a girl, and then we're like, oh, a new storyline, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so go in that direction. But um, it hasn't happened yet. We just kind of joke about it. We hope maybe it will somehow, some way. But I'm not sure if the bold and the beautiful will be able to do it because it's a half-hour show, and there's so many characters already, and mm-hmm. there's so much that they have to to fill with those characters so much, much story they have to take care of that I don't know if they could fit that in. Not yet, anyway, not right now. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Maybe in the future yeah. there might be a chance to be able to do that. Okay, Pam, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to start asking questions from people that tweeted to us that couldn't either call in or be at the show at all and wanted us to ask you some questions. So the first one I have here is from Brittany Geller. And she says, my questions for Catherine Kelly Lang, what is the one thing you cannot forgive in people and why? The one thing you can ask for, excuse me? Well, what is the one thing you cannot forgive in people and why? Oh. Um, I think lying Mm -hmm. because... If somebody is a liar, there's just no way to trust them. There's exactly. no way. There's nothing to base a relationship on, or there's no reason to believe anything they ever say if they lie to you even once or twice. You know, you so you have to. I mean, sometimes people make mistakes and they do that, or a little white lies. But you have to watch that. I don't really have much patience for that. So I, I I'll cut that off pretty quick. <laughs> Right, just, because you lose trust I really in everything. Off, so. I yeah. Her, the other part of her question is, if Brooke was a real person, would she be your friend? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I mean, maybe more so now, because she seems to be be a little more not so much into herself, and she's being a, a better mother, and she's trying to you know, do the right things and and be a good person. And she, I, to me, she always was a good person. But she, she's kind of, it seems like she's getting over making those silly mistakes. And I don't think I could put up with her so much if, <laughs> if I had to be around all that mishap. <laughs> Um, uh, Bold and Beautiful fans finally got to see a hint of you, the equestrian, during the I Now Pronounce You Man and Horse storyline. Yeah, has, love has, that. Your, has your writing time and activities changed over the years? I have not done any as many races as I would like to, but for 20-something years, I've been doing endurance racing, mm-hmm. uh, maybe 23 years. Or I started around when I started the show. I started doing... Um, endurance racing with this little Arab that I bought. I started with 25 miles, and when I did 25 miles, I thought, oh, my gosh, how could anybody do 50 miles? I was so sore and so tired, and and then I got more into it, and then I did 50-mile races, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that, and then I finally got up to doing 100-mile races, and that was really painful. But um, uh, the last race I did was about a year and a half ago, was a 75-mile race, and I came in third. But through the years, I've done about three or four races a year. Uh, And then when I had kids, I had to take a couple years off 
and maybe I was riding still, but I wasn't racing. So, you know, I, um, but mostly I would just always go back to it. It's a passion. It's my pa- I've been riding since I was three years old, and I just absolutely love horses, and it's just my passion that I think I was brought into this world with. Yeah. Speaking of, of passions, it's been a while since you've done anything outside of film or TV. Um, many other actresses from the Bell Show, such as Michelle Stafford, Jenny Francis, and Sharon Case, have done Hallmark and Lifetime movies. Is that something you'd like to explore, to do you know, maybe a TV movie or something of that sort, or a web series? Yes. I am Actually, I haven't had an agent for a while, and now I'm going to look for an agent because I'm, I am itching to do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, I love playing Brooke, and I love doing The Bold and the Beautiful, but I have time. Now, the way that we shoot, we have sometimes a week off here, and a week off. Every three weeks, we have, like, a week off. And then for our hiatuses, we have three weeks off. Like, right now, during uh, Easter, we have three weeks off. In the summer, we have three or four weeks off. And so more and more, we have more time off because we're doubling up shows during the shooting schedule, so we get more done. So because I have that time now, I'm thinking of trying to get you know, guest star spots on different series or do, like you said, a Lifetime movie or Hallmark or something like that. And just because it would be, I think, good for my my insides. <laughs> <laughs> Get out and spread my wings a little bit. Just for that creative side. Exactly. Jay, go ahead. Um, the show has always been in the half-hour format. I know there's been talk over the years of expanding it to an hour. Do you like it at the half an hour um, like it is now, or would you like to, ex- to see it expand to an hour, or do you think that this needs to stay um, as a half-hour show like it is now since it's worked so well for 25 years? Yeah. I know. I've heard those comments and people wanted to go to an hour, and I really appreciate that they want to see an hour show of us, you know, but I, I think it should stay at the half an hour. I think that's how it was developed, and that's how... It also, what makes it special, and and um, actually over in Europe, sometimes they double up the show, so it is an hour over there, and they do that to be able to catch up, because if they buy the show years and years behind, then they show it uh, two episodes back-to-back to be able to try to catch up. And, oh, okay. uh, yeah, then that might throw off that that whole thing, but I personally like it as as a half an hour, although they have put more commercial time into the the show. So our show actually has gone from 22 minutes to, I think, 17 or 18 minutes. I'm not sure, but it is a little bit shorter, and I actually do notice the difference. Yeah, it seems we do to go too. by really quick. Yes, it does. No they sooner can take than some I push the commercials out, then maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. It's no sooner that I yeah. push the fast forward button on my DVR, and it's like already there. I'm like, oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, the, the the matriarch of the the show, Susan Flannery, you know, time in time, you know, she's going to, you know, long, no longer want to be a participant, you know, part of the show. Um, her character has been diagnosed with stage, stage four lung cancer that has metastasized to the brain. The writing, the writing, be on the wall that sooner than later, Bold and the Beautiful will be without Stephanie. How could that be breached? And do you think that when Stephanie is no longer there, that broken will become like the matriarch of the show? Oh, boy, I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. I can't imagine doing the show without Susan, and I actually don't think it's going to be anytime soon, and the fact that her character had stage four cancer doesn't matter because, you know, people die and they come back (laughs) in in the show. So I I don't think that that they were writing that because she was going to be gone anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but And I just don't think she will. I, I think she made a comment that well, she said, well, what am I going to do? Just sit at home? She said she wants to work. She loves to work. She has more energy than me sometimes. She cracks me up because one time I said, oh, Susan, I'm just so tired. I just think I need to rest. <laughs> She's like, oh, honey, you can rest when you're in the grave. <laughs> and I just... I was just so amazed at her, and just I just cracked out. And she thought, "Oh my God, she is so right!" And look at her; she's just so strong and so powerful, and she has so much energy. And she's just she's been an inspiration to me, that's for sure. And I've learned so much from her. Yeah. And I'm not I even going to think about really. for her. Yes, and yes. And, all, and also, uh, what was really good about last year's storyline, the reality 
the real portion of it with the homeless and uh, yeah. that that you know bringing the on that and where they actually went out on location to different um, the homeless shelter where there was different uh, real life people there that are dealing with uh, aged out of the foster system and stuff. I thought that was really a brilliant, you know, portrayal. Uh, Susan did an amazing job in, in that in that role there as well. I know. You know, she did that. That was all improv. Oh, wow. Really? That wow. was all Susan. I don't think there was a script. I think she just, she said she got down there and she, they said just wing it. And she had to just go with it. And she, she was brilliant. I, I couldn't was. have done that. She just... Wow. You know, and she brought she brought the real feelings out of the people and got their true stories, and they felt really comfortable. And they they went on to explain, you know, their lives, and we got to see really what it was like. And it was almost like having a mini uh, reality show within mm -hmm. the bold and the beautiful, mm -hmm. and but better than a reality show, that's for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was really it was brilliant. Um, uh, I'd I think she like did the to same slip in the, another um, question here from kids, another right? tweeter. Yeah, I have thought. one from at Marsha Harris 7, and she says, there has been talk on Twitter about you and Ashley Jones working on a play together. Can you share any details with us? Well, we're just exploring the idea right now. Like I said, I, I got a little itch to do something else, and um, I think play a different character for a short time, do something creative other than The Bull and the Beautiful. And um, so we started talking about it, and a lot of people on Twitter kept coming up with these ideas. And so Ashley and I made this long list of plays that we had to read, and I went out and actually went um, to the store and bought about six of them yesterday and started reading. Um, and we're thinking about... We're thinking about doing something. I mean, it's just an exploration right now, and I don't know when either both of us will have time because she's also busy doing you know, different nighttime shows and things. But we're going to figure it out, and we both want to do that, and it sounds really exciting to us. So. Well, that's exciting. Well, maybe, when, maybe when, when at another time, I can give you a long list of web series that are on that are fantastic and are always looking for different actors, too. And oh, so oh, really? My, that would be super. Yes, yeah. I do have a bunch of them that I yes. keep in contact Good. with, so... Okay. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome because uh, the reason why I branched off from the Wrestle Style FB Twitter account, and we created this uh, soap series because we're going to blend not only soap operas, but we're also going to blend in the web series. There are so many uh, talented actors who went from daytime to these web series, and we're following them with them. So in the future, we're going to have those creators and writers and cast members on our show as well. So it's uh, I know. It is amazing. I finally just watched I watched the first episode of the third season of Venice. I never saw uh, it before, and oh, so I've got to go watch. And when I watched, it was already on, um, on the Internet, was the first episode of the third season. I don't know if you guys saw that yet, but it was. I was so impressed. Oh my yeah. gosh, and the quality and the acting yeah. and some of those scenes. Just, I mean, every once, you know, people would pop up that I knew from different shows, mm -hmm. different soap operas, and it's so exciting to see everybody playing in a web series that you know from something else, yet they're playing totally different characters and their acting is so different than it was on the soap opera, exactly. and it was just brilliant. I, exactly. I was so excited to see that. I thought, okay, okay, there's a lot. That can be done here. So exactly. Good. So we'll 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 definitely uh, hook you up with some of the shows that uh, soap fans or soap cast and soap fans love. Maybe we can get you get you on there somehow. Sounds great. Um, I just wanted to let you know that the reason what started me on Bone the Beautiful was um, I've been following wrestlers for now thir almost thirty years. Um, I would start as a young kid, just like a lot of kid, a lot of people start with their mothers and their grandparents and stuff. And so when the character on Young and the Restless, Sheila Carter, who was portrayed who was portrayed by Kimberlyn Brown. When she died on YNR, she came over to Los Angeles. And that's how, because I was such a fan of Kimberlyn's and her iconic villainous character, I was able to, you know, become a fan of the show. And, I, you know, I've been watching it ever since the first day she uh, crossed over. And um, so do you have any memories of, of working with Kimberlyn? She's, a, you know, she's an amazing uh, talent, and I loved your scenes with her. So is there any memories or anything that you can share with us with uh, working with Kimberlyn? Oh, boy. That even seems like a long time ago. It is. It has yeah, been. I haven't seen her in a long time, and, and those shows were really old, it, it seems. I can't remember the last time she was on, but she did add that element of, uh, you know, 
a really scary person, mm-hmm. and she was great at it. And <laughs> yeah, she was. She's you know, I know. It's hard to play that. And she was good, very good looking, but also really evil. You know, yeah. so she <laughs> had some interesting sides to her. And um, it'd be fun to see her come back, actually. And, yes, you know, we're we're make working something on happen. it. We're, uh, us yeah. fans are working on it, yes. Oh, we're, yeah. We're, yeah, definitely. We want her we back. We tweet that out all the time to Sony and uh, to Bold and Beautiful and CBS. Yes, we tweet it out. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, we do because it would be interesting. I, it would be nice to have her come back as a, a, in a store. She has two kids, Bold and the Beautiful, and she also has two kids on The Young and the Restless, but they never crossed over. But uh, Massimo's uh, a father of one, and Dr. James Warwick is a father of one who now is on Days of Our Lives. So it's a, it, 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 there's a possibility of bringing a little bit of Carter back. <laughs> um, oh, good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Jay and uh, uh, Pam say one more question, and then we're going to turn it over to the, to the fans because those are the ones that are here to talk to you. So uh, go ahead, Jay. Well, my um, comment I wanted to make, not necessarily a question, is I just think that you have been overlooked many a time um, at the Emmys, and my favorite scene that you have ever had on the show was when um, Stephanie hired Andy Johnson um, to date you, and then he ended up, you know, raping Brooke, and the scene that you had with Stephanie when you recounted what had happened when you came to the house that, that day, I just mm-hmm. thought that was the best performance that you've had on the show in the 25 years, and I was just outraged that you weren't even nominated that you're an Emmy. Well, you think I, that? you know, sometimes, thank you, by the way, that's really, really nice of you. I sometimes think I choose to to put in the wrong episodes. Like, for that year, actually, I did use the rape scenes, but I used the whole episode where that led up to it and when it happened. And, in fact, I should have used the after effect. You know, that's when you see, that's where the acting is, not really when the whole thing went down. But I think, right. um, and also the year that when Katie, my um, brother died storm, and mm-hmm. he killed himself to give my sister his heart. Yeah. I yeah. didn't, I wanted to submit those, and I didn't. I submitted something else, but I think those were really powerful scenes. I always seem to choose, and you know, who knows if I choose something different, if it would be different. I mean, there's so many talented actors out there that don't get nominated and that get overlooked. And, you know, it's, I just have to think that I'm really lucky to do what I'm doing. And I know I try hard and I go to work wanting to do my best. And if I don't, I leave upset. (laughs) So usually I want to be really prepared. I want to go to work. I want to do my best. And and have a great time doing it. And that, to me, is really what's important. Sure, it'd be nice to be nominated or get an Emmy someday, but I can't think like that because it just, it, 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 it would be a downer to have to think about that all the time and for it not right. to happen. So I don't, right. I try not to think about it. But um, also the rape storyline was something that I, uh, a storyline that I came up with because I wanted to start doing some stories that ha- would maybe possibly help people that are watching. So after the, the rape story on that episode, we had, it was like a PSA at the very end, right, telling right. the mm-hmm. men who mm-hmm. experienced the same thing to call, call in and be able to talk to somebody on the rape hotline. And there were so many women that called in after that show that never had called in before and had something like that happen to them through the years, but they never, they were too scared to come forward. So it was nice to be able to do that and to reach out in that way. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing something like this and you, you're up on a, you, you know, you, you have a platform to teach somebody, somebody something, not teach, but you know what I mean, just bring mm-hmm. awareness, I think right. you should take that opportunity. And Brad really has also with the, storyline of the homeless and, you know, some cancer storylines and, and the um, foster children. You know, he really started doing those stories and, and doing them really well. You know, because you don't want to get up there and you want to, don't want to be preaching and saying, you know, having some scene right. like a PSA or something, you know. And um, we might have done a few of those sometimes, but then we learned that that doesn't work. And then Brad really made a few of these storylines into great stories that were also... Uh, based on some truth, so well, that's interesting. Yeah. Pam, Pam, you uh, have a final question for Chris. 
Yeah, I want to say a couple things here real quick. One, Unlimited Jason said he loves you. Sorry he can't make it to the show. Um, two, Who? Unlimited Jason. Okay. You might know who he is on Twitter. I don't know, but he I have just, to sent, see just sent me that, that message. I tweet with so many people, and so I know. a lot of the names look familiar because they keep coming. You know, we keep tweeting, right. and so it's really nice to have that support. But, yes, thank you. Okay, and then the other thing is I want to tell the fans that I'm sorry we, you know, can't get at all the questions. We do try, and um, here's the final question that I'm going to give you. is from Natalia. I'm not sure how to say her last name, if it's Wang or Wang. And she goes by at Sunset Lover 7. She said, how do you feel about the younger generation taking over? Many fans want to see more of Bridge and the other adult couples. And you sort of answered that already, but go ahead with that. Well, I believe they're not taking over. I mean, of course, you know, our characters are also still very important because they are the four original core characters. And now Brad's is introducing the younger generation that he believes will be there for a long time and start, you know, developing those characters. And it's important to take the time to do that. So in the process, you haven't seen as much of Susan and me and John and Ron. Um, and space has been focusing more on the, the kids. But I think it will all balance out and come around. That's, that's right. perfect. Thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, callers that are um, going to be bringing on, please keep your uh, comment to uh, or question to one question. Uh, we are sticking to an hour tonight, so we can't go over, so please respect that. So coming up first is Anthony. Anthony, you're on the line with Kelly. Hi, Kelly. It's Anthony. How are you? Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm great. I'm a huge fan of yours and of The Bold and the Beautiful. I've been watching for a number of years now. I did want to just ask you one question. Um, what was your thoughts about the scenes that took place in Big Bear Cabin between your character, Brooke, and um, Susan Flannery's character, Stephanie, that um, culminated in Stephanie basically strangling Brooke and pushing her against the wall? That's one scene that's always stayed with me, and I would just like your um, input as to what filming that scene was like. Uh, okay, that was a while ago, too, but you know what? I do remember bits and pieces of that scene. I don't remember why we got into the fight, but I'm sure it was over Ridge, because everything was always over Ridge. <laughs> and um, I remember she got so mad, and I'm not sure what, there was something else in the story that really kind of spurred her to turn. I mean, she almost got, like, crazy. You know, and you see these, they shot, like, with thunder and lightning, and it, her eyes went crazy, and she was holding a knife, and I'm not sure what happened to the knife, but maybe that dropped, and she ended up trying to strangle me, and she pushed me, you know, and Susan never wants to make anything look fake, so she actually really, <laughs> you know, manhandles you, and she, like, grabbed me and, like, threw me against the wall, and she was choking me, and... <laughs> And then I think at some point then she, like, threw me over the couch, and they had a stunt double for that, but I remember having to do part of it. And it was just fun. I mean, those were always exciting scenes to do, and it was so much fun always doing scenes like that with Stephanie. But I do remember that, um, I do remember bits and pieces of that scene. And actually, there's a picture upstairs in the office that's blown up that they have on the wall of her choking me. <laughs> I really love uh. these photos. But they have that as one of the memories of the show. Well, I just want to thank you for many memories like that and uh, oh, for talking with your fans. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Okay, up next is Pam Rogers. She's a big fan of yours as well. Pam, you're on with Kelly. Oh, yeah. Hi, Pam. How are Hi, you? Hi, Kelly. How are you? Great. I'm in your fan club, and I have been for years. Yes, I know. I know. I'm um, so glad you picked the <laughs> Yes. Um, what was your, your favorite storyline that you've done? Oh, gosh, there's been so many. That's always a hard question. Um, I have to say kind of the ongoing story of, you know, the Stephanie and Brooke and um, Ridge and I, I like I always love working with the, the core four of course because there's so much history there so it's really exciting and uh, all the scenes that Stephanie and Brooke have had going at each other 
you know, and I've had wonderful scenes with Ron as Ridge, and I, I cannot pick one storyline. I have no idea. Do you? What's your favorite storyline? <laughs> I can't pick one. <laughs> Well, you have really my favorite one. Well, sort of. I like the one, but I wish they explored it more. Was when I can't even think of the, your mother's name on the show. Brooke's mother's name on the show. Beth. I was hoping that they Beth. would explore that a little. Yeah, Beth. That's it. I was hoping they would explore that a little bit more because I was really looking at the storyline. But then you know, I they kind of ran that one a little too yeah, short. It was nice having my dad come on, and um, yeah, that was nice for a while. But I don't know what happened to my mom. She's somewhere in Paris or something. <laughs> but it's, it would be uh, nice to see more of that. Well, thank you, Pam, so much for the call. We do got to move on, okay? Thanks, Pam. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Up next is Kenya. Kenya, um, your question, please, for Kelly. How you doing, Kelly? Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, you are one of my favorite actors. On both Thank of you. Beautiful. And my favorite scene is when uh, you and Ridge got reunited after uh, Stephanie lied about um, about to see with Thomas and you sitting on the step. Wait, where Thomas? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing. I said when you were sitting on the step uh, when uh, Ridge came back to get you back with you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was not too long ago. That was yeah. beautiful, you know, yeah. and that was, um, yeah, after the Barry storyline. Yes. Yeah. I loved it. I and the Barry storyline was fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Yeah. It was All right, good. thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Kenya. Bye. Okay. Um, now, the rest of them, I'm just going by area code because I wasn't able to get their names, so I'm just going to be picking random codes. Uh, 626, you are on with Kelly. Hello. Kelly? Hi. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm on with you. I think you are so awesome. <laughs> yes, Kelly, how you are you? You are great. You should get an Thank Emmy. Thank you. You really should. I, I'm shaking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Since you've been around for so long and you've been on the show for, like, 25 years, what, yep. do you have any advice for, like, potential actors I'm, and actresses younger than you that want to break into the business? Well, it's kind of a process. Um, I grew up doing commercials and print work and when I was a kid, and then I decided to do acting when I graduated from high school. But even then, I still had to, I had to go and get new agents and new headshots when I was 18 and then go out on interviews. And my first movie, though, I kind of got by luck, actually. And then from there, it was more work. You have to, first I'd say you'd have to start getting um, well, before you even get headshots, I would say take an acting class. See if you really like it. You know, the whole idea of it sounds really exciting and fun, but when it gets down to actually having to do the work, some people realize, oh, this is not what I really wanted to do. <laughs> because it is work. And yeah. so you, the best thing to do is go take an acting class, do a couple scenes, or, you know, see how comfortable you are with it, see if you like it, do some monologues, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then from there, you can get headshots taken, and then you get an agent. But agents always want to see a resume, so that's the tricky part. And if you do or did things in school like theater or musical theater or anything like that, then you could put that on your resume. Or if not, you'd have to just show that you're taking classes, things like that. Or maybe do a play, and you could... You know, and build up your resume that way. And then hopefully they could send you out on interviews. So it's kind of a process. You have to start at step one. You are such an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And I have to say hi from Anola and Linda. They're two big oh, fans hi. Of this big group. So I don't think hi, they're on, but I just wanted to say hi for them. And nice to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. And Bye. Thanks get for that <laughs> Thanks. Hello? Hello? Oh, all of a sudden it's quiet. <laughs> What's happening? Doug, are know. you here? Oh, you guys Maybe are there. Doug. Okay. Me, Doug. I thought my phone died or something. Or something. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, Pam, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have uh, more from the, the fans that tweeted. I have one from Amelia Hall, and it's Amelia Hall 5. And she said, if Stephanie were to leave the show, how would you like her last scene with Brooke to be? I can't even, I can't even go there. I can't even think about it. I don't want to think about it because I don't want to put it out in the universe because I don't want Stephanie, right. uh, Susan, Stephanie. I'm calling her Stephanie, <laughs> Susan, to ever leave. So I am not, I'm not going to answer that question, even though, <laughs> you know. I'll answer another question, Amelia. Tell me, to okay. ask me something else. I'm sorry. I, I, just got, I just got back on. I do apologize for that. I got disconnected somehow. Uh, we're gonna okay, go that's to... all right. We went ahead and asked some more question, another question from another fan. So no you can problem. go ahead and pick up another call. All right, sorry about that. Okay, uh, area, uh, let's see. Area code 972, I believe this is Matt. Matt, you're on the air. Hi, Kelly. I tweet at you all the time. Um, I don't know if hi. Uh, Matt, but how are you doing? Yeah, hi, Matt. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Well, first off, good. I just want to say, as you, you know, I love Brooke and Nick. I hope Jack Wagner somehow gets back to the show. I one know. Day. I see your tweets <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and, um, well, I, I know you didn't see the show today, but actually Brooke uh, told Amber that she is the new Stephanie and Amber is the new Brooke. Um, a lot of fans, I think, are kind of worried about Brooke turning into Stephanie. What, what, what do you feel about that? Do you think that she is, or um, how, how do you see No, <laughs> no, that was just kind of, I mean, I don't think so. I, who could be, who could really <laughs> fill Stephanie's shoes, you know what I mean? She's, yeah. she's been the matriarch of that family, you know, the Forrester family, really holding all of that together, and she's, played such an integral part in all, all of that. I don't think that anybody could even even come close to Stephanie. But um, I just think it was a matter of ha ex kind of putting each other in, in each other's shoes, you know, how Amber in that situation uh, – I'm not explaining myself very well. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't, wouldn't read too much into it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. All right. I didn't well, think so, I, but I think I remember saying that line. Yes. Well, I love you and Adrienne, and I thank you so much for doing this, and I will definitely keep tweeting at you. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Matt. Thank okay. you, Matt. Bye. Matt. All right. Uh, next up is area code 252. 252, you're on with Kelly. Go ahead. Hi, Kelly. My name is Joyce. Um, Hi, Joyce. I have been a day one viewer. Uh, love Brook and Ridge. A uh, member of a Facebook group called Bridge Fans United. We all just love you to death. And oh, I one love thing that. that's just been bubbling. We do. We love you. It just been bubbling up on me is when can we expect a, a bridge wedding? A can bridge we wedding. A bridge wedding. I yeah. keep forgetting that we're not married because <laughs> it seems like we're married, but we're we're not married. So, huh? A bridge wedding. We don't have a wedding because each wedding is just the epitome. I mean, it's they're they're beautiful, and you know we'll make it to that wedding. <laughs> it would be great. It would be great. Maybe there might be something in the future. Who knows? But yeah, um, maybe let's it, do it in Italy. I mean, how many times? I don't even know how many times I've married Ron on the show. I think it's been like six or seven, so that would make, you know, pretty soon we'll be up to ten. Because, you know, once we get married, of course, then they're going to have to do something to break us up because that's, that's, I guess, what, they, what keeps it exciting. But, so I have my reservations about getting married. But, yeah, I bet you, I bet you that's, uh, that could be an idea. And keep you together this time. We love our bridge. We want them together forever. <laughs> I know. Forever. <laughs> I know. I know. They are a great couple. Thank you so much for your call. Oh. Huh? I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All righty. Next caller up is uh, area code 609. 609, you're on with Kelly. Hi, Kelly. My name is Dan. Um, Dan. I've been, I'm also, yeah, Dan. <laughs> I'm also oh, a okay. day, day one viewer um, from the start. And wow. um, I just wanted to let you know that um, – at work, we faithfully watch Bold and Beautiful. Um, we have people who are ABC fans who are now our CBS fans because that's the only channel we actually can get at work. So when the whole Oliver Hope storyline and 
Rose Garland came out, we had so many people screaming when you uh, you raised your mask that people <laughs> from outside <laughs> were like, what the heck is going on? So we had, that like, was a women great, I mean, it was, did you see it coming? No, I I did not see no, so it was at a all. shock, and it was a shock to I think a lot of people appreciated the story because it was just such a shocker, and also it was you know of course it had to be my character. That yeah, it, but, um, <laughs> I always seem to manage to get all those storylines, but uh, it was it was fun and it was shot really well, and uh, the music was incredible, and it just seemed really kind of cinematic to me and and a little bit mysterious, and it was. I just thought the director did a great job, you know, you in have, keeping it mystery until that moment. It was hard to do, you know, because it's <laughs> like, how do you fool somebody, you know? But it, it have, was good. So you have about 20 new Bold and Beautiful fans at my um, place of work, just to let you know, just from that scene alone. Now it's total Bold and Beautiful, 1.30, everybody's in the, in the break room watching. Really? So, yeah. I love uh, that. We love you. <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks Thank so much you. for your call. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, up next, we're getting close. We've got about nine minutes left. Uh, next up is not area code 954. You're on with yes. Kelly. Yes. Hello? Yes. Hi. You're on. Hi, Kelly. My name is Tracy. I'm a huge fan. I'm calling from Hollywood, Florida. How are you? Hi, Tracy. Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I've been a fan since day one. Um, I just have a quick question for you. I wanted to know your thoughts on the Leffy Lope, like we love to call them, the little nickname we gave them on Facebook. How do you, do you think that they're, uh, what's like the comparison between them and the bridge tridge triangle? Are they the bridge and tridge of the now, of the new generation of B&B? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I would think so. I mean, mm-hmm. I would hate to, I just hate to classify anything like that, but I would, I would think so because, I mean, look at the, look at Kim. She looks so much like me and it's Jackie ridiculous. looks so much yes. like, I mean, Jackie looks so much like Hunter. It's amazing, really, the casting. And they're such great actresses. And then Liam Scott, you know, comes in and he's an amazing actor. They've really got, Brad really has a good young group of people now that I'm sure he wants to hang on for a while and just really build that history with them the same way our history was built so long ago, mm-hmm. you know, with, with Hunter, me, and Ron, for that triangle. And, it, you know, it's worked with us mm-hmm. for so long that now I think it, they need to put it onto another group, which would be the kids, of course. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I would think so. I think that's going to be happening for a while. And I just have one more quick question. I know we're out of time. But um, do you think that Brooke is now treating Amber the way Stephanie treated Brooke since way back in the day? What are your thoughts on that one as well? I want to say no, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. We And we haven't done enough yet um, mm-hmm. to really, really see – where that's all coming from. I mean, you know, I think I have good reason more so than what Susan had against, uh, Stephanie had against Brooke. I mean, mm-hmm, she just, mm-hmm. I think I haven't because um, Amber really ruined my son's life and, you know, took him for a ride. And, and then she had to say, uh, I don't know, she just really, I thought she was kind of, um, Amber, her character was different from Brooke a lot, a lot, for mm-hmm. my book a long time ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I think it's a little bit different situation. I think maybe our reactions are the same. However, mm-hmm. you know, Brooke may be mm-hmm. reacting the same way Stephanie reacted to Brooke a long time ago. But I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see how that goes. Okay. Because I actually love having those scenes with with Adrian. She's awesome. You guys are awesome. You guys I are had awesome. one. I had okay. some scenes with her recent. I'm not sure if they aired yet or not. But she really had me so angry. <laughs> it was so interesting I, after the scene I'm like wow she really I was really really just lost in my anger towards her but because awesome. uh, she plays that character so well that awesome. character. I just wanted to say thank you for 25 great years um, 
And I hope you guys are on for another 25 years to come. And me too. I love B&B. You guys Thank are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, do you have time for one more call, or do you need to go? Uh, one more. Okay. I'm just going to pick a random one. Uh, area code 734. You're on the air with Kelly. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, Hi. Kelly. Just want to say Hi. that How I you? love you so much. Thank Great. you. Is, Are you there? So what Did do you, you have think about your... Yeah, I'm here. Yes, I have one question. Okay. Go ahead. What do you think about Brooke sleeping with her daughter's boyfriends, and do you think there may be another one on the way? <laughs> oh, gosh, no. I think, I hope that she doesn't, that doesn't happen to Brooke anymore, because that's, that wasn't good. Those storylines weren't good. That really was hard for me to say Brooke in some of those situations. But um, I think she's learned her lessons. I think she's grown up. I think she realizes there's more to life than just making her heart feel good, you know, and she's now more concerned about her kids and her kids' lives and other things that are going on around her and her husband and her husband's family, things like that. Besides, she was so caught up in what was going on with herself that she forgot about everything else around her. And I I don't think she can continue doing that. She needs to you know, grow up, which I think she has, and learn her lessons and move on and try to be a better person. I hear you there. Yeah. Um, it was nice to see you. Thank you. Hope you have a great night. Thank you for Thank calling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. This has been an amazing opportunity for us and for your fans. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, guys. It was fun, and we'll have to do it again in the future. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have you back want, on. You know, a couple the, more months of episodes and have more to talk about. That would be wonderful. That sounds great. I know you got to go and uh, uh, you're going to a fashion show tonight, and you were talking about taking your daughter to a tennis uh, event, and I saw that you tweeted that she recently competed in a celebrity event. Is that correct? Yes, it's called Desert Smash. It's on my, you know, people who want to check out my website, it's KatherineKellyLang.org. I just recently got it up and going, and it is looking pretty good. So you can find out more information there. Um, also about how to join my fan club, if anybody's interested. I have all that information on my website. And the Desert Smash info, that was for, it was to help kids with charity. It was a variety children's charity fund. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just um, a tournament with professional players and celebrities and amateurs and things like that playing tennis together and raising money for the kids. So right. it was great. a great day. My daughter played, and she got to play with um, Timothy Oliphant from, I think it's Leverage. I'm not sure he's a, what nighttime show he's on, but he's been an actor for a long time. And then a lot of different uh, professional players as well. And then she also was the ball kit for, like, Federico, I mean, Fernando Badesco and some of the Bryan brothers and some of the others. It was a fun day. I was fighting a cold, though, that day, so I wasn't feeling so good, but it's still a fun day. And she is a top junior tennis player. She's doing really well. I'm so proud well, of her. That is great to that's hear. Awesome. We will We will let you go, and we do appreciate your time and enjoy your time this evening, and we will all see you on Twitter as well. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, thank you. You have a good night. All right. Uh, You listeners, go ahead and keep continuing on and listening. Uh, We've got one more small segment that I uh, wanted to uh, talk about. Um, we there is a uh, author out there that writes books who just released her second book. Her name is Kat Halstead, and her books are based in the soap opera world. And I'm going to bring her on the line now. (coughs) Kat, Kat, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you great. How okay, are you doing? Good. I'm good. How are you guys it's tonight? Nice. Oh, we're Hi. Hi. Doing... Hi. Um, it's I Pam. Brought... It's Pam and Jay. Um, Jay. Were you listening in to the, to the Kelly show? Yes, I was. Oh, yes. She was, she was amazing. That was a great interview. Um, listeners that are uh, tuning in, I just like I said, I uh, 
Kat had reached out to me to see if we could uh, maybe give away uh, a set of her books that she has written. Uh, she's uh, I haven't actually read them yet, but I'm going to get me copies mm-hmm. of them so I can read them. Uh, so Kat, go ahead and just tell us about uh, the books and where they can find them, and then uh, whoever's calling in, if you want a set of free two books to enjoy in the soap world, just definitely call us now at three four seven two one five nine five zero three. Um, out of however many callers that are on my screen right now, I will pick. I'll just pick a random one, and uh, you got, you will win her book. So go ahead, Kat. Okay. Well, the first one that I released this past summer is called Secret Fantasy, and it is about a woman who is a soap opera actress, and when she gets killed off the show, she goes back to see her sister, and when she's back visiting her sister in Durango, Colorado. All these secrets she's got comes out, like a long-lost daughter, a relationship with her high school best friend, all this craziness. And it takes place over the span of about 20 years. And that's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords. So it's widely, it's paperback, ebook, everything. And then the new one is Hello Again. It is the first in a three-book series I've got planned. It is about several characters. The two main ones are David Grayson and Lexi Kramer, and they were on a soap opera together about five years before. And they were friends. There was some sexual chemistry, but nothing happened. Mm Because he was with someone else, she was with someone else. But now they're working on a pilot together for a new television drama, and that chemistry is still there, and it's building And the first book, it kind of starts everything in motion for this relationship to start and all that. And it's available on Amazon right now for Kindle and in paperback. And in a few months, it'll be on everything else. And also, go ahead and let everybody that's listening know your Twitter name and your uh, your personal website for uh, your books. The website is cathalsted.com, and you can get everything there. And then my Twitter is catdvs. So K-A-T-D-V-S. And also, when I get to 225 followers, I'll give away a paperback copy of Hello Again. And when I get to 250, I'll do a paperback of Secret Fantasy. All right, perfect. So listeners, uh, she's a big soap fan. She's a soap author. So definitely give a chance to uh, to uh, to uh, follow her and, and get her books. Um, and may I, I cut in for just one moment? I wanted to go ahead and put on in the chat room. It's Kat, K-A-T, and then D as in David, V as in Victor, S as in Sam? Yep. Okay. And what was your what, your uh, website? Cathalstead.com, K-A-T-H-A-L-S-T-E-A-D, and then just dot .com. Thank you so much. Go ahead. No You're welcome. Problem. All right, so uh, to wrap this segment up, I know it was quick, and, and, and I apologize for uh, uh, the quickness of this segment, but I wanted to be able to help promote uh, anything that's soap-related. So I'm going to just pick a caller. Um, if you are on the line and you are interested in the little contest that we're doing, then go ahead and disconnect now because I don't want to bring on somebody that that's not interested. I want to help, I want to help promote somebody who's an avid reader who will get to, to – so, um, I'll give about 30 seconds for that to happen in case I, you know, in case there's any listeners that aren't interested. But we do have people listening, uh, so and there are some callers on hold. So it looks like I'm going to just pick a random one. Uh, area code 775. You're on with Kat. How are you? I'm okay. Okay, great. Um, Kat, what's I'll your let's name? Um, Sarah. Well, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Well, Green. Sarah. Sarah. I'm. I'm Dreamer of Soap. Oh, oh hi, Dreamer. Sarah. <laughs> this is the first time I heard her voice, and I, I tweet with her all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then that's even that's even easier for you guys to connect. Uh, uh, you just, um, uh, Sarah, just go ahead and follow Kat if you don't already do, and you guys can work out the the, uh, the get, getting the, the books to her. Okay, Kat, are you? Are yeah, you just been. You know, I don't know if I am. Just have just send me a DM on Twitter, okay. and we'll get it all straightened out. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks so much for both of you, uh, Kat. I'll go ahead and disconnect with you too because I need to, we need to follow, we need to do a wrap up of the show. So once again, follow her at Kat DVS and go to her website, CatHalstead.com. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. For-
Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So there we go. Got a little promo going on for uh, up-and-coming author and some free books for fans. That's great. Uh, so Jay and uh, Pam, what uh, what'd you think about Kelly? Oh, such a delight. I had as much such fun tonight as I did last night. It was a great interview. Yes. Very, very and, sweet ladies. Yes. Yes, she definitely for sure. And, and it was really, you know, you know, we were shocked last night when, if you were listening to our Sharon Case interview, she had mentioned that um, different cast members had talked about our show uh, on the set, and then tonight to hear that Catherine actually listened to Sharon Case's interview last night was really an awesome treat as well. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I liked her. It really she was. was. <laughs> and it's, it's just refre- it's refreshing. And we love the support. And you don't – everybody out there listening, you have no idea how much we, we appreciate your support and your joining us in this and uh, living our adventure. And we do it all for you guys. Yep, that's what we do it for. We do it for you guys. And, and the slogan, when, I, when, we, when, when Pam created the new name for us, the Soap Series – the tagline really is where we bring the stars to you because that's what we do. We bring the cast, the stars, the writers, directors, whatever we're going to do, whatever we have planned in the future, we're doing it for you guys, the fans, because well, as, we, as we mentioned on every show that we're trying to build a soap community to show that soaps do matter. Um, Pam, would you like to do a little shout-out for the website that, that we have been working with to uh, help promote uh, Save the Soap, John? Uh, yes, definitely. I want to thank uh, Margie, who is in charge, and I know some of the other people have helped her with that website. Uh, we're trying to, you know, save the soap, so there's a lot on there, easy tweets and that, to, you know, get them to fill out the coupons and that for a cable station. But she also has been so wonderful with adding on our guests that we're interviewing and having everybody do it as a daily tweet. And um, I can't even tell her how much I, I appreciate that either. I mean, we just love her to death for doing that for us. And I yeah. thank you, Margie. And that would be um, at SaveOurSoapGenre.com. Yes, definitely check it out. And uh, when sh- when we have shows coming up, such as the show tomorrow, Antonio. Oh, I'm about sorry. A- I'm sorry. Let me correct that. It's SaveTheSoapGenre.com. Oh, okay. Definitely go to save the soap genre dot com. But she sets up a quick tweet where you just go to yes. that page and click tweet, and it'll tweet out all the information about our guest of the night. So she has that set up for Antonio Sabato Jr.'s interview tomorrow. So if you go there, you can just click tweet, and it'll automatically tweet out uh, uh, who it is, what time, the link, and everything. So she's she's it's, it's been a great godsend, and that and that's helped so with last night's show with Sharon Case. Uh, right. So yes, def- definitely tomorrow. Uh, if you're if you're a new listener tonight. We have some great guests coming up. Can, we're, you know, we're continuing our All Star Week tomorrow with Antonio Sabato Jr., who played Jagger Cates on uh, General Hospital. I always, always say it in line. Um, when I even talk about General Hospital in general, I always because of the initials are GH and GL. Um, but then we also next week we have Ian Buchanan, who currently plays Ian on Days of Our Lives. We have uh, Signe Coleman, who uh, recently uh, reprised her role as Hope Adams on Young and the Restless, who plays Adam Newman's uh, mom, and she has a new web series that has two episodes that's premiered already called River Ridge, and you can see that at the SFN Network online. And then uh, we got two more going the next uh, couple weeks. We have Lauren Coslow, who currently plays Kate on Day of the And we also have Brian Gaskill, who uh, has been on multiple soaps, including All My Children and Bold and the Beautiful and and, and other Fort Charles and Guiding Charles. Light, and then uh, he's, and he's uh, going to got, be on the Bay. Yep, that's what I was going to say. She, he just got picked up for the Bay, so he'll be on the Bay this summer. So uh, you can definitely check him out at Brian Gaskell with the number one at the end uh, to follow him as well. He has a CD out that is a spoken word poetry. I've listened to some snippets, and it's some really great stuff. So he'll be on April seventeenth. Uh, so you can always follow at the Soap Series to get all the latest on our scheduling events. We have a lot more cooked up as well. Uh, just to give you a sneak peek, we're working on getting dates now for Victoria Rao, who played Lucilla Winters. We're working with Tristan Rogers now to get a date very soon, who played recently um, Colin on Young and the Restless. And we're still uh, almost got the date for Millie Thomas Scott, who plays Nikki Newman on Young and the Restless. So uh, hey. there's, a lot of, there's a lot coming up, uh, and we're also reaching out to other other people as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. 
Any last comments before we uh, end the show? No, I think I that's would, about it. Another great night. Uh, yes, another great night. I just night wanted to will... say that um, I appreciate you guys letting me um, join in on the interview tonight. Catherine is, pardon me, Kelly, I should correct myself. She has just been my favorite from the Golden Beautiful, one of my favorites of all time for the 25 plus years that I've watched soaps. And I appreciate you guys letting me be involved with that tonight. And just the last couple of weeks I've been watching um, and hearing about people and the actors putting out word about this, this show. And I just think it's it's going to save the soaps and it's going to just generate a lot of buzz within the actors at the studios to you know, to save our soaps by having this format that you started, Doug and Pam. And I think it's just a, a great start to what's going to be really great. I'm excited about it. All thank right. you well, so thank much you. for that, Jay. We, we appreciate we it, and we were happy we to have you here. Yes, thank we do so appreciate much. that. So uh, we'll tune in tomorrow night as we have the uh, the handsome and delicious Antonio Sabato Jr. with us. So until then, follow the soap series where we bring the stars to you. Blog Talk Radio where millions of hosts and listeners gather.